On this episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show, we talk about some of our strategies for managing athletes both in season and off season and how to periodize an entire year. The Ask Mike Reinald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show. We're up at Champion Physical Therapy and Performance up in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. We're here with Mike Scaduto. Say hi, oh. Mike. Mike. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Scaduto's here answering all your questions. <laughs> Typical episode. <laughs> here. He's golfing. Len- Len- Lenny McCrina, <laughs> Dave Tilly, Dan Pope answering all your amazing questions. Len. You want to do a uh, student intro? Uh, I'd be honored, Michael. Uh, we have Janice Conkle from the New York Medical Center Technology of New York City. We have Leanne Colon from Texas Women's University in Texas. <laughs> and we have Cameron McDonald from the University of Rhode Island in Rhode Island. Thanks, Mike. One of your best, <laughs> one of your best ones so far. Smooth we, delivery. I mean, week after week, and just delivers <laughs> over and over. These are my podcasts. It's pretty I solid. Mean, so. <laughs> Who's the lucky one? Me and we got a good podcast one. Podcast outfit. <laughs> Sam from Santa Clara, California. This question is from a fellow alum of Springfield with Dave Tilly. Ooh, Springfield. So this, one's right. Ma- this one's Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, Cam, I know it's been a few weeks, but did you, did you, did you Google it? <laughs> I did, I did Google it. You're supposed to say something. All right, what did you find? I, I didn't want to come in. Yeah. Is this your first week or second week? Second week. I wasn't here last week. So, all right, so, so, so second week he's getting used to How many Springfields are there? We have 33 different Springfields, over 25 states. Whoa, so some states have multiple <laughs> Springfields. Double Springfield. Double Springfield. That's wow. confusing. Yeah. Springfield has West and East. That's Springfield. amazing. So, little Easter egg for those <laughs> couple episodes ago, you know, a few weeks ago, <laughs> where we talked else. about that. But yeah, anyway, so, close. all right, so let's start <laughs> over. So, and Mike's going to do it over. So, we have, so start over, sorry. <laughs> All right, Sam from Santa Clara, California. This question is from a fellow alum of Springfield with Dave Tilly. Uh, what are the differences between how you manage athletes that are in season versus off season, especially for a sport like gymnastics or swimming with short off seasons? All right, great question. How do you manage in season versus off season? So that alone is a great question. Mm-hmm. But I like the secondary thing here because he said specifically he. It's, I, I guess it could be a, a she, but Sam said that how do you do it specifically in a sport like gymnastics or swimming that has a short off season and i think at this point in time you almost have to argue that most most youth sports are getting smaller and smaller off season so I think this question and this conversation is going to be applicable to everything, right? Like, I, as a parent, like, I'm probably, well, I guess Lenny and I are the only parents in here, but, like, in terms of, like, the age of our children, it's amazing what's happening with youth sports right now, how they're trying to get them to play the same sport, like, every semester. Where we were very delineated when we were growing up is fall sport, winter sport, spring sport, like everybody was delineated. So I think that's happening. So what's the off season sorry. in gymnastics? Like how, what, how many, like baseball, we know because yeah. of the weather, like what's the gymnastics? The non-competition season? season is like usually end of May through September, October, but they're still training the whole time. Of course, you know, right. every athlete's going right. to yeah. train They take a week year. off after a national, so they're peak meet, and then they usually back to training. But the non-competitive season is so May through November. June, July, August, and September. September. So October, yeah. So we'll say a four-month four off-season. Yeah. So four Dep- to five college months. College is different. College is condensed like week to week to week. It's pretty good off-season. But yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually, it's not terrible. It's really yeah. Not it, you know what it's, you know, the weirder part is that it, it, when you, you say four-month off-season sounds like a lot, but eight-month in-season sounds like a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Right? So as much as I like the four months, having eight months, and we're talking about 12-year-olds and stuff, right? I think that's, you know, the other thing, like, I think that's pretty crazy. Any, does anybody know definitively on swimming? Because I know swimming's probably the other one we've, we see a ton where they have, like, yeah. two, three months of an off-season, right? Even golf is, like, 
two, or three months events, of an yeah. off season. Like distance running in college, PGA. they run all the seasons, and then there's a small little break, and then back to it again. Yeah, I mean, we've worked with collegiate rowers that had you know almost no break. You know, so I, I think this is pretty good. So, so, and so, how do we do in season versus off season in general? Like, so, Dave, you work with your your athletes all year round. What? How do you define what's different between what you provide in season versus off season? Yeah, and this is something that you and I did a podcast on for you know earlier talking about it's such a big issue. It's really hard medically to try to attack this, and this is where I think it's really beneficial to either come from a coaching background or work with strength coaches and sport coaches to understand where they're coming from, you have to almost attack your year-long plan periodized in a long-term model just as they would, right? Good coaches periodize their entire year. They think in a long-term athletic, uh, athletic, a long-term athletic development model. Got it, right? Um, <laughs> That's good. So they, they don't only think about the weekly goal of what's this meet going to do. They're trying to think about where you're going to go next month, next year, what's your four-year goal, what's your 10-year goal. So as a medical provider, I'm almost trying to do the same thing. If they come to us with an injury, say, in the uh, just in the beginning of the summer when they just finished their year, you have three months to build them up, try to get them like above capacity. But if that same injury kind of tweaks again in you know the middle of the championship season, you only have two months left of season, you have to have a completely different approach and conversation with the athlete around that versus, you know, okay, let's just like take this long 12 week, you don't have that in the same time. Right. So that's the first thing I try to think about is, where are you in season? What are the goals? And if you understand the way that periodization works, like it's a strength block usually first, then it's usually transitioning to a sport specific thing. So gymnastics, it's power. Maybe it's like, you know, sprinting speed or something like that in another sport. But versus as you get more in season, it's maintenance care. It's not, you're not gonna build new strength when you're competing every single weekend. So if you're in the clinic trying to chase strength adaptations when you see them once or twice per week, it's just not gonna happen because then they go to practice and they're probably burnt out. But in the summer, if they you know can be there for a half hour, hour and do a good robust strength training program along with your rehab, that's super important. So I think that's that's kind of where it comes down for me is the conversation is where are you at season wise and then what are the goals? Yeah, I feel like rehab people specifically tend to have a harder time with this because they don't work with athletes in season a yeah. lot. You don't, or you only work with injured athletes yeah. and you don't work with healthy athletes yeah. maintaining it. So, you know, in baseball, we, we talk about this all the time, right? We kind of talk about how every time you pitch, essentially, you kind of injure yourself. And, you know, we have a, you know, either a day or five days or seven days, depending on your level, to, to get them back. So, I mean, working with people in season and management, you have to almost expect Experience that to truly appreciate it. Same thing with the strength coaches. Tons of strength coaches in, in sports, even you know professional level, that work with athletes in the off season. That because they've never done in season, they really just don't get it. They, yeah. they don't get the stress that happens in season. So in baseball, we're in a really weird spot. I don't know if it's like this in other sports, but what we're doing with our off season training in a lot of these places now, it's almost like a race to get them to look amazing on day one. And it, it's almost like they're peaking them at the wrong time. They're peaking them from day one instead of understanding the full year concept. So all these people are like, it's February one for baseball, for example, and, and they've peaked. And when realistically we want that two months later. But remember, if you just train people off season, your job is to get them to be maxed out on February one when the, on their last day with you. Yeah. And you see where that's, that gets a little weird when it, if you work with somebody in an off season, you understand that February one is still two months away from the season, yeah, right? And that's something that doesn't get it. So, Len, what, what do you do different with baseball players in season versus off season? What, what, where's your mind go when you're working with them? Yeah, I mean, in, in season, it's more maintenance. It's more we know the adaptations that occur soft tissue-wise with throwing, especially higher level pitches, high school, college, professional. So it's more soft tissue. It's more lower level strengthening to kind of keep, you know, obviously the cuff strong, keep the leg, leg strong, keep the soft tissue, you know, mobile, or as Tom Brady would say, pliable. Um, so it, it's, it's the basics of like an arm care program of soft tissue and strengthening stuff. In the off season, in the off season, it's loading it. It's 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 heavier deadlifting. It's more squatting. It's different. We have different phases of, of arm care programs here. So it's heavier eccentrics. Uh, you know, putting an eccentric force through the cuff versus just kind of that maintenance of kind of easier soft tissue work and easier manual resistance and easier weight. So our dumbbell work might be five six pounds of you know three sets of you know ten to fifteen, but off season it's going to be you know eight ten pounds you know maybe six to eight reps something like that so we'll play with we'll play with rep sets and we'll play with the weights as well if we're dealing with cuff stuff for example in a baseball play which yeah. i know is yeah. you know you know a very basic concept for most yeah but. great stuff 
Yeah, you know, I'll kind of take this from my perspective, just because I tend to see a lot of like, I'll say powerlifters, right? So I got two, good two patients right now, powerlifters, Arnold Classics coming up. It's probably going to be over by the time this is released. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's very different the way you manage that person in a few weeks coming up to the competition as opposed to afterwards, right? So you, you're looking at an athlete that's trained for the entire year for three very specific lifts, a very specific technique, right? You don't really want to mess with that too much right before they compete. The only caveat is that you start getting athletes are getting to the point where the pain is now making them get worse. And if that's the case, you have to make a more radical change. So my goal when an athlete comes in is I want to change things as little as possible. Unless their programming is crap. If they have crap programming, we have to change some of that stuff. But if they're on a really smart program that's good for them and they're starting to break down, I don't want to change that because the goals are all set within that program. The program is made specifically for that person. I want to keep it as similar as possible. But if they're getting to the point where they're starting to break down and their performance goes down, you have to make a change within that person's program so they continue to, to compete, basically. The other thing is that after these athletes finish up, so let's say two weeks from now I have like some of these athletes coming in again, then we figure out, okay, why is this breaking down? Why am I continually having this hip pain when I squat? Why am I continually having this upper back pain when I squat? And we start to tweak their technique a little bit. We tweak their program a little bit. We try to put them in a better place so that in the future they don't break down the same ways. But you definitely don't tweak that too much right before the competition because you really risk making a, a huge blunder and then you know failing their lifts because they're just they're doing something too too new too different yeah, that's, that's perfect I, I guess so to summarize this is how I break down the year you know if you periodize the year like Dave kind of said we have to do right right when the season ends the first phase for me is to restore and optimize so that's to kind of go through all right wh what how are you beat down from the season what do we need to do to get you back to neutral right then it turns into the enhanced phase, right? So we restore, we optimize, then we start enhancing them. That's the performance enhancement phase of the off season. But it has to start shifting to preparing. So preparing is preseason, and then the last in-season phase is maintenance, right? Maintenance for all the hard work you did. So think of those four phases, and you have to put that together with whatever your athlete has. So if they're off season six months, you make it fit into that. If it's three months, you make it fit into that. And those periods will kind of like grow or shrink based on that uh, but I think that's the way to do it we see a lot of times competing stress we say that a lot with people is they're working on the wrong thing at the wrong time they're supposed to, so baseball they're supposed to be getting their pitch count up and starting to prepare to pitch and they're still working on enhancing something like their deadlift or whatever it may be and you start to have competing stress on the body so think of it in those four four phases and I think that's a good approach to go for. So um, awesome, another great question, thanks so much. Head to MikeReynolds.com, click on that podcast link and you can see a form to ask us some more great questions like that. And be sure to go to iTunes to subscribe and rate and review this and we'll keep doing this until we, until we run out of the, all these great questions that we have in queue. So thanks so much, we'll see you on the next episode.